Today we're looking at one of the most elegant integrals in mathematics, the Gaussian integral. We want to find the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of e to the negative x squared. This shows up everywhere from probability to quantum mechanics. Now, at first glance, this looks impossible. There's no elementary antiderivative for e to the negative x squared. But there's a really clever trick that makes this work. Let's call this integral i. So i is the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared. Here's the key insight. Instead of finding i directly, we're going to find i squared. So i squared is the product of two integrals. Notice I'm using y for the second integral since x is already taken. These are independent, so we can combine them into a single double integral. This gives us a double integral over the entire xy plane. Now we can combine these exponents. We get e to the power negative x squared plus y squared. And here's where things get interesting. x squared plus y squared is just r squared in polar coordinates. In polar coordinates, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, where r is the distance from the origin. So let's convert everything to polar coordinates. In polar coordinates, x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. The area element transforms with an extra factor of r. This is the Jacobian of the transformation. This r factor is important. It accounts for how area elements scale in polar coordinates. Our integral now has theta going from 0 to 2 pi, covering all angles, and r going from 0 to infinity. The nice thing is that this separates into two independent integrals. We can split this into the theta integral times the r integral. The theta integral is straightforward. From 0 to 2 pi, this is just 2 pi. So that's 2 pi. Now for the r integral. This is perfect for the substitution. Let u equal negative r squared. So u equals negative r squared, which means the differential is negative 2r. This means r times the differential of r equals negative 1 half times the differential of u. Perfect. That's exactly what we need. Making the substitution, we get negative one-half times the integral from zero to negative infinity. We can flip these limits by removing the negative sign. This gives us one-half times the integral from negative infinity to zero. The antiderivative of e to the u is just e to the u. We evaluate from negative infinity to zero. That's one-half times e to the zero minus e to the negative infinity. e to the zero is one. And as u goes to negative infinity, e to the u goes to zero. So we get one half. Now we multiply our results. i squared equals two pi times one half, which simplifies to pi. But remember, we want i, not i squared. So we take the square root. Taking the square root, we get i equals the square root of pi. So here's the result. The integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of e to the negative x squared equals the square root of pi. This shows up everywhere in mathematics, from probability theory to quantum mechanics to signal processing. So why does this trick work? The key was converting to polar coordinates. In rectangular coordinates, this integral seemed impossible. But in polar coordinates, the exponent simplifies to just negative r squared, which only depends on distance from the origin. This works because the function has perfect circular symmetry. It doesn't matter which direction you go, only how far. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe for more math content.